Well, hello kids. Hope you've had a good start to school this year. This will be our second week in our series, Diaries of a Godly Kid. This week, our lesson will be from Exodus 16, 1 through 22. God provides manna and quail. Sometimes things don't aren't going just our way, but we can keep from grumbling by remembering that God is taking care of everything. When things don't go the way you want, don't let that ruin your attitude. Have a godly attitude. Be thankful and wait in the hope for the Lord to do even greater things. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for all you have done for us. Help us to remember our blessings as we have a good attitude. Stay tuned for our skit and a message from Captain Cam. Dear Doc, today I had quail for the first time. Also today, I had a new kind of bread. It's called manna, and it doesn't come from grain. It comes from the sky. Does it taste good? It's not bad. It's actually kind of sweet. It could use some butter though, but hey, it's better than nothing, right? You may remember that a few days ago, we crossed the Red Sea from Egypt, and we gathered up a bunch of fish there. My mom said we could eat the fish until we got to the promised land, but wouldn't you know it, we ran out of fish pretty quick. In fact, everyone was running out of food. We were in the middle of the desert with no crops around us and no water that we could see. Everyone was starting to complain, including me. What's the matter, Georgie? I'm hungry, Mom. And there's no meat, no bread, no fruit, no food of any kind. That's not true. I still have a few nuts if you want some. I don't want nuts, Mom. I want bread. I want meat. We'll find some food. Where? How? I don't know but I trust in God. I don't know, Mom. I kind of agree with the people I heard earlier. They said we were better off in Egypt. Georgie, don't say that. We were slaves in Egypt. Never forget that. Out here, we're free. What's the point of being free if we're just gonna starve to death? If God can get us out of slavery, then God can give us some food. Let's remember the blessings God has given us and have an attitude of thankfulness while we wait for his provision. And you know what? God did provide. People of Israel, God has heard your cries, and he's sending you bread from heaven and quail every day. So we got our meat, we got our bread, and I learned a valuable lesson. Instead of complaining about everything, we need to have a positive attitude, and we need to remember the good things God has done, and expect him to do even greater things. Hey everybody, I uh, hope y'all had a good week so far, and Welcome to this week's Bible lesson, and we're going to continue talking about the diary of a godly kid. And hopefully what we learn today is the importance of a good attitude. So just want to read this intro here, and it says, In Diary of a Wimpy Kid, the narrator and hero Greg talks a lot about the problems that come with being a kid. He doesn't just talk about it, he complains about it a lot. Truthfully, Greg does have a lot to complain about. He struggles to fit in with school. He deals with tough classmates, including a girl who bullies him around, and he has an endless trouble from his big brother, Roderick. Greg complains about a lot of things in the book. Truthfully, we complain a lot too, don't we? We all complain when things don't go our way. We complain when food we don't like appears on the dinner table. We complain when things are not fair at school. We complain about anything and everything that doesn't go our way. But do we really have things to complain about? Let's take Greg as an example. Sure, he has struggles at home and at school, but Greg has a family that loves him and friends who accept him for who he is. Even his brother Roderick isn't a complete pain in the neck. He can be kind to Greg when he really wants to be. The Israelites found an awful lot to complain about as well. As they traveled through the wilderness to the promised land, they started, started to complain about everything. There's no water. There's no food. My feet hurt. When are we going to get there? Maybe we were better off in Egypt. Hard to believe, but the Israelites actually said that they would rather be slaves. 
They wished they could go back to Egypt where they had been mistreated. Moses hears their complaints and so did God. So what did God do? Something amazing to remind them and us that we need to change our bad attitude. The story comes from Exodus chapter 16 and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 23. It says, Then the whole community of Israel set out from Elam and journeyed into the wilderness of Sin between Elam and Mount Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. There too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they will gather food, and when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as usual. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, By evening you will realize it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaints, which are against him, not against us. What have we done that you should complain about us? Then Moses added, The Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread to satisfy you in the morning, for he has heard all your complaints against him. What have we done? Yes, your complaints are against the Lord, not us. Then Moses said to Aaron, Announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out toward the wilderness. There they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites' complaints. Now tell them, in the evening you will have meat to eat, and in the morning you will have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, It is the food the Lord has given you to eat. These are the Lord's instructions. Each household should gather as much as it needs. Pick up two quarts for each person in your tent. So the people of Israel did as they were told. Some gathered a lot, some only a little. But when they measured it out, everyone had just enough. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had enough. Each family had just what it needed. Then Moses told them, Do not keep any of it until morning. But some of them didn't listen and kept some of it until morning. But by then it was full of maggots and had a terrible smell. Moses was very angry with them. After this, the people gathered the food morning by morning, each family according to its need. And as the sun became hot, the flakes they had not picked up melted and disappeared. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much as usual, four quarts, for each person instead of two. Then all the leaders of the community came and asked Moses for an explanation. He told them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow will be a day of complete rest, a holy Sabbath day set apart for the Lord. So bake or boil as much as you want today and set aside what is left for tomorrow. <clears throat> So the Israelites, you know, they, they left Egypt um, and they crossed the desert and they came to the Red Sea with the army behind them. God opens up the sea. They pass across on, on dry land. Then the, God closes the sea back up, drowns the people that were following them. And so they're going through the wilderness and it's hot and their feet hurt and all these, you know, they don't have anything to eat. And they start complaining, actually thinking that it would be better if they were still in slavery back in Egypt. And so God hears the complaining and 
he starts providing, you know, what they need. And so he gives them quail in the evening and this bread-like substance, you know, in the morning. But they're still complaining. But God brought Israel out of Egypt and slavery. And he set them free. And he was sending them to a new home. And like I said, you know, he parted the sea and everything. And, and so here they are. They're, they're heading toward a new home. And it's going to take a while. But they start complaining. And so, like I said, he gave them what they needed. So he would be blessing them with all the stuff they need. And I would like to tell you that, that the Israelites learned their lesson from, from complaining to God about what, you know, bringing them out of the situation they were in and complaining that they didn't have anything to eat. I would like to be able to tell you that they, that they learned a lesson, but they didn't. All through the book of Exodus, <clears throat> they whined and complained. It, it was, there was always something. And that's not the attitude of a godly kid. And it's not the attitude of, of a godly adult. You know, God wants us to remember the blessings that he blesses us with and to be thankful and to be positive. But the reason it's so easy to complain is that most of us want what we want. And when we don't get our way, we complain. Um, the world should know exactly, you know, the way we like things. And, and, and so when we don't get things the way we like them, you know, we, we just won't accept that. You know, we are just so selfish sometimes and we just can't accept when things don't go our way. Maybe we can complain because we lack perspective we complain when mom makes veggies that we don't like. Well, we don't stop and realize what a blessing it is to actually have food on the table. In many parts of the world, and even in her, here in our country, there are people who are lucky to have one meal a day. How can we complain about what's on the table when there's food on our table three times a day? Having a godly attitude takes a lot of work. It means swallowing our pride and letting go of our selfish desire to have everything our way. It also means seeing the world from a broader view than our own. We need to see how blessed we are and how fortunate we are to have what we do. It also means we need to see God as the wonderful provider that he is. We need to stop thinking of him as a vending machine who is there to give us what we want. Instead, we should see him as our heavenly father who always gives us what we need. And I would also say that we should stop looking at him as a vending machine who is there to give us what we want and let him change our wants to match his wants. Instead of, you know, always thinking about you know, ourselves. We should try to think about, you know, what does God want? And godly kids don't complain. They don't fuss when things don't go their way. They are always mindful of the things God has done. And they are always thankful. Don't be a whiner. Don't fall into tr to the trap that kept the Israelites so miserable. Let go of your selfish desires and let God show you all the wonderful things he has done. Be thankful for all God has given you and always keep a godly attitude. I want to throw this in too. That one of the reasons that the Israelites had to wander around in the wilderness for 40 years. Before they finally made it to the promised land was because of their attitude. They didn't trust God. They didn't trust you know, where he had them. They didn't like where he had them. They didn't, wasn't, they weren't sure about where he was taking them to. 
and and later on we may learn about you know even they even complained once they got to the place where god was taking them but their suffering lasted longer because of their complaining and because of their bad attitude so try to remember that too you know if if your your bad attitude can cause you to you know suffer longer than you need to if we would just trust god and have faith in in him and just let him take care of us and just be thankful for what he does for us we'd be a whole lot better off that's all i got for this week and see y'all again next week bye bye